Hello. Welcome to Demystifying Detox. My name is Dr. Lauren Pilgrim. No pill makes you grin like Dr. Pilgrim. I am a naturopathic physician dedicated to educating and motivating others to achieve optimal health. I am a graduate of Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Tempe, Arizona, and a transplant from outside Boston, Massachusetts. I have been practicing medicine and therefore compassion, acceptance, and tolerance for more than 15 years now. No matter what you are struggling with, believe me, I have either experienced it myself or have worked with someone firsthand who has had the same issues. There is no topic I have not discussed with a patient over the years from the most mundane to the most embarrassing. As a naturopathic physician and certified CBT provider, that's cognitive behavioral therapy. As a naturopathic physician and certified cognitive behavioral therapist, it is my job to remain impartial analyze the information you provide and help guide you to goals that are established collaboratively and approved by you. I offer a unique perspective to general medicine, weight management, viral infections, and other difficult to diagnose cases, which means I really specialize in the connection between gut health and mental health, otherwise known as the gut brain axis. That's A-X-I-S, gut brain axis. The gut brain axis consists of bi-directional communication between the central nervous system and the enteric nervous system. Enteric meaning anything of or pertaining to the intestines. So again, the gut brain axis consists of bi-directional communication between the central nervous system and the enteric nervous system. And the role of the gut-brain access is to monitor and integrate emotional and cognitive centers of the brain with peripheral intestinal function. Let me say that again. The role of the gut-brain access is to monitor and integrate emotional and cognitive centers of the brain with peripheral intestinal functions. It is now widely believed that the gut microbiota is critically important for appropriate development and maintenance of brain function. Moreover, there is accumulating evidence implicating the microbiota in a variety of psychiatric, neurologic, and neurodegenerative diseases. Given the role of diet in modulating the microbiota, we may really be focusing on a diet, microbiota, gut, brain access in mediating health and disease across the entire lifespan. Due to my unique approach focused on your goals and health aspirations along with my special blend of clinical homeopathy CBT, and targeted nutritional prescriptions, I am also what is known as a medical psychologist. This means that I hold a medical degree, i.e. I am a naturopathic physician. This means that I hold a medical degree and I specialize in mental health support, but I do not prescribe medications as a psychiatrist would. Rather, I would spend time getting to know you week by week, helping you to recognize current patterns in either your physical or mental health or both. And then continuing on together, we would create clear, concise and attainable goals because change does not happen inside an office in session. It happens little by little in the in-between moments in life. It happens because we choose to focus on this and make change happen. It happens because we do the work. 
because change does not happen inside an office setting, we will explore options and create an action plan, which will help to guide you and us step by step. And we will venture forward towards better health and an elevated quality of life. To support you physically and mentally along your journey towards better health, I would also prescribe homeopathic medications, nutraceuticals tailored towards your needs and skill building practice exercises, again, tailored to your needs. Today, I am here as a facilitator, but above all, a wellness support system to assist you in any way I can. I hope to help you identify, execute, and achieve your health goals. Excuse me one moment while I go ahead and share my screen. And voila. Again, welcome everybody to Demystifying Detox. I am excited to have you here today, the first live webinar event of 2021. Okay, I am so glad to have everyone with me here today. As I mentioned, health is a crucial aspect of wellness and disease prevention. When our bodies are functioning optimally, we feel better, we think more clearly, we have more energy and we look our best. Today, I'm going to address why you would want to detox, how to detox safely, and we're gonna talk about both foods that contribute to toxic buildup and foods that help to contribute to getting rid of that toxic buildup. I hope everybody's ready. Let's get started. Okay, in order to understand how to detoxify or why to detoxify, let's begin by talking about toxicity itself. Toxicity is the degree to which a substance, either a toxin or a poison can cause harm. Now, if you've been following along in the series, you already know that I was an English and history major in undergrad before switching gears and becoming a science nerd, as I like to call myself. And of course, I still enjoy looking up both the proper definitions as well as the origins of words and phrases. So what the heck is the difference between a toxin and a poison, all right? We just talked about toxicity. Um, is the, the degree to which a substance, either a toxin or a poison, can cause harm, okay? So we're talking about toxicity. Toxicity is the degree to which a substance, either a toxin or a poison, can cause harm. So what the heck is the difference between a toxin and a poison? A toxin is a harmful substance produced within cells or organisms. Synthetic toxins created artificially do not count in this case. A toxin is a harmful substance produced within the living cells of an organism. Poisons are substances that can cause harm to organisms when sufficient quantities are either absorbed, inhaled, or ingested, okay? So a poison is a type of toxin and it is classified as a poison because that poison got into the body either by being absorbed, we touched it and it got in through our skin, or it got inhaled, we breathed it in, or it got ingested, we ate it in some way, shape or form or possibly drank it, okay? So toxins are not referred to poisons uh, I'm sorry, toxins are not referred to as poisons or venoms, which we'll talk about in a minute, until how they enter someone's body has been taken into account. So we just talked about how poisons are classified by as poisons because they were either absorbed, inhaled, or ingested. Venoms, on the other hand, are injected either by bite or by sting. And so this is, of course, um, regulated to the animal kingdom. So um, if a poison is injected or 
by a bite or a sting, it is referred to as a venom. So snakes are mistakenly referred to as poisonous because although the venom is poisonous to us, because of how that poison is delivered to the human body, it would be more correct to refer to that snake as venomous rather than poisonous versus frogs, which secrete their poisons. Uh, so we are able to absorb that poison by touching the frog, right? We could absorb it through our skin. Uh, or in some cases, there are some cultures who uh, indulge in the licking of the poisonous frogs, and that would be an ingestion of that poison, which I guess would be more on purpose, which handling the frog, I would assume, would be more accidental, whereas you would pick up the frog not knowing that it was poisonous and that kind of thing. So in the fields of medicine and zoology, there is often a distinguish between a poison from a toxin from a venom. And um, we just talked about all of those things and why they would be distinguished from each other. Toxins are poisons produced by organisms in nature. Venoms are toxins injected by a bite or a sting. And the difference between a venom and other poisons is the delivery method as we spoke about. Industry, agriculture, and other sectors employ poisonous substances for reasons other than their toxicity. Most poisonous industrial compounds have associated material safety data sheets and are classified as hazardous substances. Hazardous substances are subject to extensive regulation on production, on procurement, and in use of overlapping domains of occupational safety and health in public health, in drinking water quality standards, in air pollution, and in environmental protection. Pesticides, on the other hand, are a group of substances whose toxicity to various insects and other animals deemed to be pests is their primary purpose. Uh, and natural pesticides have been used for this purpose for thousands of years without the chemicals. And I personally wish that we could go back to that, but I don't see that happening. Okay, so after all of that, we defined a toxin and a poison and a venom. So let's actually define toxicity. In the medical field, there are two distinctions of toxicity. There is acute toxicity and chronic toxicity. Acute toxicity involves harmful effects in an organism through a single dose or a short-term exposure. Chronic toxicity, on the other hand, is the ability of a substance or a mixture of substances to cause harmful effects over an extended period of time, usually upon repeated or continuous exposure, sometimes lasting for the entire life of the exposed organism. And so I would reference the commercials to the attorney spokesman commercials uh, for um, Roundup and Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, the elimination process. The body's natural process for detoxification is done in the liver, where impurities are removed from the blood through a two-step filtration process, after which toxins are processed into stool for elimination. The body also eliminates toxins through the kidneys via urination, through the lungs, of course, by blowing off CO2, through the lymphatic system, which by definition regulates the garbage flow outward from the body. And of course, we cannot forget the largest organ of detoxification, the skin, which purges toxins from the body via sweat. As we make our way through our daily lives, we are continually bombarded with various chemical and environmental toxins, which can slow down the body's elimination process. Detoxification, therefore, is about resting, cleansing, and nourishing the body from the inside out. Detoxing is just one way we can help prevent disease and add quality years to our lives by removing and eliminating toxins, then feeding your body with healthy nutrients. The goal of any detox program is to help boost the body's natural cleansing process. We boost the body's natural cleansing process by resting the organs, resting the body, resting the mind. 
We help by stimulating the liver to drive toxins from the body. Although to be fair, if you uh, simply do an elimination diet or a detox diet, um, or you um, do some kind of minimal intake detoxification diet, then by definition, uh, if you don't have those toxins uh, coming in on a regular basis, three, four, five times a day, the liver will naturally start to detox the toxins out of the body because there won't be the influx of toxins coming in. The goal of any detox program is to help boost the body's natural cleansing process by promoting elimination through the intestines, through the kidneys, and through the skin, as we spoke about briefly moments ago. Uh, the goal is also to improve the circulation of the body and to refuel the body with healthy nutrients. Some of the common symptoms of toxicity include, but are not limited to, unexplained fatigue, sluggish elimination, irritated skin, allergies of all kinds, low-grade infections, puffy eyes or bags under the eyes, bloating, menstrual problems, and mental confusion. Anyone who experiences one or more of the above regularly can benefit from even a short detox to help alleviate stress on the body. Detoxing is not a new discovery. For centuries, cultures around the world have practiced detoxification as part of religious rituals and have been rewarded with health benefits. Some results reported um, to be experienced after detoxing include clearer skin, weight loss, increased immunity, uh, decreased cravings, food intolerance relief, improved clarity and sense of well being a feeling of actually being lighter, elimination of excess waste, and more energy. Sounds good, doesn't it? Before you start thinking that detoxing sounds too good to be true, keep in mind, this takes work. The effort you put in will lead you to the results you are looking for, but you have to be willing to work for it. So with that being said, Let's take a look at toxic foods. Aside from the obvious external factors, such as chemicals and clothing, outgassing of furniture and uh, carpeting, and of course the chemicals and cleaning supplies, many of the foods we eat are actually not really food. They are merely made with food-like substances. And the best example I can think of off the top of my head would be uh, in the grocery store in the cheese aisle, in the aisle where they sell the eggs and the sour cream and all of the packaged cheese, all of that cheese. If you look at the packaging, we'll say cheese foods. In order to find real cheese, uh, you have to go out to that um, standalone um, uh, bin in the front of the grocery store where the more higher end cheeses are. And that's where you're going to find actual real cheeses. Even the fruits and vegetables we eat are grown with pesticides and heavily covered with poisons. And it used to be that we could bring our fruits and vegetables home and kind of wash them off and feel uh, good about having washed the pesticides off that had been sprayed on the plant. But now the pesticides pesticides have been sprayed onto the plants for so long that they've actually been, been incorporated into the soil. And so now when the plants roots reach out and they, they suck in all of those nutrients from the soil, they're actually sucking in a lot of those toxins too. And so now those toxins are becoming literally part of the fiber and molecular uh, makeup of the vegetables and the fruits. And that certainly can't be washed off, unfortunately. Some of the top offenders when it comes to toxic foods include sugar and sugar substitutes, gluten, caffeine, dairy, meat, processed foods, and sodas. And we, of course, will talk more about those as we go along. There are a number of adverse health outcomes associated with a diet containing the foods previously mentioned. 
These foods are also associated with poor overall dietary intake, which has been linked to many diseases and chronic conditions, including cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, obesity, some types of cancer, and of course, osteoporosis. How do we know processed foods are bad for us? That's very simple. Every time a population adopts a Western diet high in processed foods, they get sick. Not one or two, not a small pocket, not a small number, not a small minority, everyone. Every time a population adopts a Western diet high in processed foods, the entire population gets sick. The processed foods I'm referring to are the ones that have been chemically processed and made solely from refined ingredients and artificial substitutes, uh, substances that would be. Um, and so a good example of that would be any kind of frozen prepared food, whether it comes from Trader Joe's uh, or from uh, Food City or from the dollar store. The process, um, the detoxing from processed foods results in a lower intake of sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Detoxing from processed foods results in a lower intake of artificial ingredients, including preservatives, colorants, flavor, and flavor enhancer chemicals and texturants. Detoxing from processed foods results in a lower intake of refined carbohydrates the ones responsible for the rapid spikes in blood sugar and insulin levels, and then of course, responsible for the sugar crash that follows. Processed foods are engineered for overconsumption and are meant to lead to, to addiction. In short, our bodies are not designed to handle the massive amounts of salt, sugar, and unhealthy fats found in processed foods. Some pretty amazing results have been reported by people who have significantly cut sugar intake. Weight loss has been the most noticeable outward sign followed by a clearer complexion. Internal benefits include an increase in sustained energy levels and experiencing less bloating and less gas. Refined sugar is one of the most harmful things you can put in your body that isn't outright classified as a narcotic or poison. Now, one of my all-time favorite anecdotes is about Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola's history has been well-documented. The drink was invented in 1885 by a pharmacist from Atlanta, Georgia, who made the original formula in his backyard. The, recipe, the original recipe did indeed contain cocaine in the form of an extract from the coca leaf. The coca leaf inspired the coca part of the beverage's name, and the cola comes from the cola nut, uh, which is where the caffeine comes from. Now, here's my favorite part of the story. While the cocaine was removed from the product for many reasons as laws were made, evaluated, and amended in 1885, but the company did not put up a fight to remove the cocaine because they had already discovered that sugar had all of the same medicinal qualities of cocaine, but was more addictive and was in no danger of becoming an illegal substance. Once you've broken the cycle of sugary dependency and cleanse your system of its effects, sugary snacks like donuts and cakes will not have the same irresistible appeal that they once had and foods you never thought of as particularly sweet, like bell peppers, carrots, and beets, will start tasting very sweet. Something naturally sweet, sweet like an apple or a yam will even taste like candy. By ditching the refined sugar, your palate will become more attuned to the natural sweetness of real foods. When removing animal products from the diet, the body goes into a cleansing mode to rid itself of the accumulated toxins automatically. Noted benefits of detoxing from meat and dairy include reduced inflammation, lower blood cholesterol levels, rebalancing of healthy gut bacteria, 
even if you're not ready to take the plunge and go full on vegetarian, it is recommended to avoid meat and dairy while doing a detox diet because meat and dairy both slow down digestion. They clog up the bowels and they breed harmful bacteria in your gut. They also tend the body towards the acidic levels, uh, which then leads to reduced cell function and the slowing down of detoxification, which is the opposite of what we're trying to achieve in this particular um, example. Now that we have a better idea of why we would want to detox, let's take a look at how. Detoxing is all about diet. And I do not mean dieting as in counting calories. I do not mean dieting as in depriving yourself. I do not mean dieting as in a, um, as in a, um, program that is specifically geared towards, uh, you're not allowed to have. I, I do mean removing the known food offenders and increasing your intake of non-toxic foods for a brief period of time. Non-toxic foods would include green leafy vegetables, fruits, water, vitamins, legumes, nuts and seeds, and herbal teas. And I will also throw in that stevia would be a non-toxic food as long as it is a natural derived from a plant and non-synthetic version of that stevia. When it comes to detoxing, many different options are available depending on your need or want. Detox programs can last anywhere from three days to a month or even longer. Fasting programs should be done with extreme care and for a short duration. It's always recommended to discuss significant changes with your doctor to ensure you are aware of any potential risks to your health. Three to seven day juice fasts, and juice is drinking only fresh fruit and vegetable juices and water, can be very effective, can be a very effective way to release toxins from the body. However, this type of detox can be extreme. And so if you are a beginner, I would shy away from the juice and vegetable only fast for beginners. For people completely new to the process, or for those who want the easy convenience of the ready-made kit, I recommend a detox program uh, called NutraClear Plus from Biotics Research. Now, if you were part of the Metabolic Biome uh, webinar event, or if you've already listened to that recording, you will recognize this product from that. This product, again, is called NutraClear Plus from Biotics Research. And of course, tomorrow when you get the link to the recording, there will also be a link to a 20% off uh, to the online store, um, which would be the same one. So uh, from the metabolic biome. So if you have that one, it won't be much different. NutraClear Plus is a 15-day science-based metabolic cleanse program that supports the body's detoxification processes. By supplying key nutrients in a delicious tasting powder, NutraClear Plus provides the ideal nutritional foundation for those in need of metabolic clearing, while also supporting liver function, energy production, and intestinal balance. The formula includes easily digested certified organic pea protein, medium chain triglycerides, added fiber, and an extensive array of antioxidants. This powerful combination of micronutrients, fiber, fruit, and vegetable extracts supports safe and effective detoxification. Simply consume two NutraClear Plus shakes and supplement packets per day, plus one healthy meal and two to three small snacks that work for your schedule. To get started, it is important first to identify your goal. Next, determine a way to measure where you are currently and how to track your success towards your goal. 
If your goal is weight loss, weigh, and more importantly, measure yourself at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of your detox. If your goal is to get rid of headaches, then create a log in order to document the duration, the intensity, the frequency, and surrounding factors of your discomfort related to those headaches. If your goal is more frequent and less painful bowel movements, keep a chart to track them. Become Sheldon Cooper, so to speak. Track what you ate before and how you felt both immediately after eating as well as one to two hours later as well. If you want to de-stress, map how you feel throughout the day, especially before, during, and after eating. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Proper preparation is going to be your key to success. One of the most important things you can do to prepare for your detox is to clean your kitchen of all toxic foods. Go through your pantry, go through your refrigerator, your cabinets, and all food storage areas to remove anything processed, anything sugary, and anything caffeinated. Letting go is a great feeling. You are welcome to donate any unopened food to a friend or to a food pantry if you don't feel good about throwing things out, but they are super processed foods that you're throwing out. So really they aren't good to anyone. Next, gather a few recipes. I will share some at the end of our time together, um, but take five to 10 minutes to sit down and prepare your menu for the week. This way you'll have an easier time making a shopping list and avoiding the temptation of unhealthy foods. If you need further inspiration, you can find my lecture on the art of meal preparation, both on the website at thecenterofbalanceclinic.com slash video gallery, or you can also, or that video can also be found on my YouTube channel at Dr. Lauren Pilgrim. You want to make sure that your pantry and kitchen is fully stocked with everything that you will need. One of the causes of eating poorly is lacking time to prepare healthy snacks and meals. You can avoid this pitfall with a little food prep. Once you get your foods home, prep everything before putting items away. You are more likely to snack on already cut carrots or throw a meal together if all the veggies are already peeled and diced. The more you can prep ahead of time, the less likely you are to grab something unhealthy out of convenience because the healthy foods that you're looking for are already made convenient. Some useful kitchenware to have on hand include a good quality sharp knife, a big soup pot or a crock pot, glass containers. Nice to haves in the kitchen include a blender or immersion blender, a juicer, a food processor, or even a food dehydrator. There is nothing you can't do with a good knife. Also, you'll want to work towards replacing any nonstick cook cookware that you have. You'll want to work towards replacing that with either stainless steel or my favorite, ceramic coated. Hydration. If you are able to, start every morning with a glass of warm lemon water, which is used to stimulate digestion for the day and clear the body of any toxins that may have settled in the digestive tract overnight. You are then welcome to drink chilled lemon water throughout the day. Drinking lemon water supports immune function, alkalinizes the body, aids digestion, clears the skin, and promotes healing. So especially if you are a coffee drinker, coffee is known to acidify the body, acidic conditions in the body lends themselves to be more inflammatory, lends themselves to be easier to, um, to be susceptible to getting sick. So if you spend your morning toxifying, um, I mean acidifying with coffee, then you should spend your afternoons uh, alkalinizing with lemon water or even with uh, apple cider vinegar uh, in your water would also do the same thing. 
Smoothies are packed with nutrition and can make a great meal. Plus, you can hide all kinds of healthy additions in a smoothie that you might not otherwise eat in your natural day uh, through meals. Um, and then here's what hangs me up about smoothies. It's the sugar content without the fat or a protein source to slow down the digestion and therefore the influx of the sugar. Healthy or not, there's still a large amount of sugar being dumped into the bloodstream all at once. And then this is what sets you up for that sugar spike and the, the following sugar crash. So I implore you to find a protein powder or a medical foods powder and or think about adding avocado as a base to your smoothie or a live cultured yogurt or even nut butters as the base to your smoothie instead of the typical banana base. There are many, 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 many recipes out there for smoothies and also for juices. And I want to clarify, when I talk about doing a juice cleanse, I very specifically mean buying good whole fruits from the grocery store and taking them home and juicing them yourself. I am in no way, shape or form advocating for you to go to the grocery store and buy a carton of juice. Those things are loaded with refined sugars and lack the detoxing nutrients that you need to do this properly. Again, there are many sources uh, for recipes for both smoothies and for juices. Some of them are labeled uh, for recipes for weight loss. Some recipes are labeled for detox. All of them are for health. Okay, soups are an especially soothing during a detox. You can get a well-balanced meal by adding healthy fats, complex carbs, nuts and seeds and herbs to your recipe. Um, growing up as a little Jewish girl with definitely having a Jewish mom, anytime we got sick, uh, chicken soup and matzo ball soup were made in my house. Uh, and so Jewish penicillin is what this would be referred to. The healthy um, chicken proteins and the healthy fats from the chicken uh, skins along with the nutrients from the vegetables and the herbs that are put into the soup uh, are a wonderful way for you to get all of the things that your body needs without having to work particularly hard for it. So if you make a big pot of chicken soup and um, simmer it uh, longer than you would if you were going to make chicken noodle soup with chunks of vegetables in it, um, then all of your nutrients from your vegetables and from the bones and the chicken will now be in the water. And if you sip on that soup stock, you will get all the nutrients that your body needs, including protein, including good fats, and definitely vitamins and minerals. The other favorite detox soup that I enjoy is a cabbage-based soup, and that recipe is significantly longer, so I'm not going to rattle it off to you right now. Uh, but I will include the recipe with the link to the recording when I send out the email tomorrow. So you can look forward to that. Additional techniques to aid your detox include eating plenty, plenty of fiber, include brown rice and organically grown fresh fruits and vegetables, beets, radishes, artichokes, cabbage, broccoli, spirulina, chlorella, and seaweed are all excellent detoxifying foods. Cleanse and protect the liver by taking herbs such as dandelion root, burdock, milk thistle, and of course, by drinking green tea. You can also take vitamin C, which will help the body produce glutathione, which is a liver compound that drives away toxins. You should drink at least two quarts of water a day during your detox. And uh, that can be made easier by finding a 32 ounce uh, thermos of some kind. And then you'll be able to measure out two quarts much more easily than if your bottle is only eight ounces. Remember to breathe deeply to allow oxygen to circulate more completely throughout your system. Try to sweat in a sauna so that your body can eliminate waste through perspiration. 
If you do not have access to a sauna, whether it be far infrared or a traditional Finnish one, you can um, essentially get a sweat produced by hard exercise. So feel free to either get on the treadmill, get on a piece of exercise equipment that will allow you to do cardio to get your heart rate up to break a sweat. Uh, or of course you can get outdoors and do any kind of activity that would be sweat inducing. And last but not least, um, you might wanna think about indulging in a dry brushing of your skin or possibly trying a detox foot spa or foot bath um, as they are uh, sometimes called. Um, both of these things will help to remove toxins through your pores. And um, if you're thinking about doing a dry brushing of your skin, please remember that they make special brushes for that. Don't just take any kind of brush to your skin. It will not have the same effect. Completing your detox. Once you've completed your selected detox, you do not want to add back all of the food you've removed immediately. This is especially important if you choose to do a fast or a juice detox. You will want to incorporate solid foods starting with easy to digest options and gradually re re replacing them back in. You may be feeling so great after your detox that you don't even want to add certain foods back. If however, you do decide you want to add meat back in, choose healthy proteins and reinforce them to your, and reintroduce them to your system gradually as we spoke about. If you've removed several foods, wait several days between reintroducing each item. For example, if you've removed gluten, meat and dairy, pick one of those items to add back to your diet, then wait three days before adding the next food, then wait another three days before adding the third one back. This will help prevent your system from becoming overwhelmed. And of course, we have resources that we used uh, to create this uh, webinar and um, I will provide those in tomorrow's email as I don't have the same technology going on today that I usually do to show what the resource links are. But that's all folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please email me. I can be reached at info at the center of balance clinic.com, which is of course the website, the center of balance clinic.com. All videos that we have um, made thus far can be found on the video gallery page of the webinar. They can also be found on YouTube on my channel at Dr. Lauren Pilgrim. No pill makes you grin like Dr. Pilgrim. Thank you all for joining me today. I am taking a small hiatus from the webinar junket to prepare new ones. Um, I will be back in about a month or so, and I am expecting to be offering webinars once a week in the evenings around 7 p.m. Um, the day to be announced. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining me, taking time out of your day. I appreciate you all, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Um, the date to be announced on the website and um, email. Thank you again. Have a great day.